This is the Buffalo Fanatics. Let's go. What's going on, Bills fans? I'm Thomas. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. Thanks for checking out another video. This time, my reaction, Chargers beat the Bills 31-20. to I called that. If you haven't checked out the last video that I made, the uh, Josh Allen starts week two, go check out that video. I'll put a link in the description. Go watch that video. Watch till the end because I actually predict the exact right score. I'm, I'm hyping myself up right now because I got it right. 31 to 20. It was just a guess, but you know what? I'm going to feel myself because that's that doesn't happen to me very often. So I was pretty excited when, you know, I wasn't happy that we lost, of course. I wanted us to win, but, you know, I predict the score at least, right? So if you haven't already, go check out that video. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. But let's jump right into the video. So I got a couple things that I want to go over here. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Let's start with the biggest thing that we know coming out of that week two game against the Chargers. Vontae Davis retires at halftime. That doesn't just look bad on Vontae Davis. That looks bad on the Buffalo Bills Mafia. If you get what I'm saying, that looks bad on us. I mean, it's like, dude, at least finish the game. He just said, I'm done? Way to give up, man. Way to be a quitter. You know, I get the whole thing of you getting old and you saying, okay, you know what? I just can't do it anymore. I just can't give 100%. I just can't, you know, play with the young boys. You know, I'm not myself. I get that. I can respect that. But at the same time, you have to understand you're in the middle of a football game. You have to play. You have to at least sit on the sideline. You took the coward's way out. And that's just ridiculous. But enough about Vontae Davis. He's off the team. He's not coming back. He ain't welcome anymore. He gone. Josh Allen, 54% completion percentage, threw for 245 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, quarterback rating of 63.3. You know, the stats aren't really the best, of course, but for a rookie, for a rookie quarterback who didn't get that many snaps in preseason, who has probably the worst offensive line, out of all football you know he made some things happen and you can't sit here and deny the fact that Josh Allen should have been the starter week one I said about two months ago Josh Allen needs to start week one what happens they throw Nathan Peterman out there and 24 yards and how many no first downs later they decide they say you know what we just can't have Nathan Peterman as our starter it ain't working and it's not gonna work. So I'll, I'll take that credit as well. Josh Allen should have started. Leslie Frazier got scored on 28 points, four touchdowns, and Sean McDermott pulled that plug right out and said, nah, mm -mm, I'm taking over. He did it without like, you know, disrespecting Leslie Frazier, which he should, which, you know, he, he wouldn't say, oh, he's a bum. He, he shouldn't be on this team or whatever. He would never say that, you know, but he pulled that plug. And, you know, he took him out of, of the play call and said, you know what, this is my, this is what I'm best at. And I don't know if it's just the Chargers didn't really, like, have the urgency to turn the Jets back on and keep scoring uh, after the half or what. But, we, you know, Leslie Frazier's defense gave up 28 points. Sean McDermott, when he was calling the plays, gave up three. Three points, a field goal. That's it. Not four touchdowns, a field goal. I don't know. And in that, in that second half, I think we can all agree our eyes did not lie to us. That, that defense and the, and the offense kind of started coming together a little bit. And just for a second in the third quarter, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we can actually like get a couple of drives going here, we might be able to have a closer game than we thought, right? I mean, I'm sure most of you optimistic Bills fans out there like me thought the same thing. And, you know... I don't know. I would be totally fine with Sean McDermott from now on out just calling every single play. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but I just think that Leslie Frazier, from what I've seen the first two weeks, is a very, very soft defense. Very soft zone defense. It's bend and break. <laughs> That's the defense he's playing right now as far as giving up 47 points and then 28 points. 
before Sean McDermott says, okay, this is it. You, you, your defense can't, you can't stop these guys. You know, it is what it is, but as far as Sean McDermott calling the plays from now on for the rest of the season, I wouldn't mind it. He looks like he's got a better grip on that defense. I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed, but that defense started to come into play after the half. Moving on here. Are we tanking? I hate to say that with only two weeks in, but are we just going to embrace this like, you know, we ha we could very well go 0-4. We play Minnesota. We play Green Bay at, at their homes. Very good chance we go 0-4. Then we come back to Buffalo to play the Titans, which are, you know, middle of the pack, who could very well also beat us, could go 0-5, and, and we could find ourselves 0-6 against the Texans, against Deshaun Watson when we go to Houston. And, you know, we have a very, very tough schedule for the first six games of the year. Very tough. I mean, probably the only winnable game I see is from now on out for the next four weeks from Minnesota, Green Bay, Titans, and, and uh, Texans. The only winnable game I see is Titans. I just don't see us going away with Josh Allen on the road and coming out with a W. I just don't see that happening. Tell me what you guys think. Do you guys think that we'll be able to to maybe steal a win in, in these next four games? Because I don't know, man. I think the next four games will really dictate what it's looking like. Um, I think it's a very good chance we have a top five pick. I don't really see us really coming together. If we're going to be good, we're going to have to hope that we don't get a lot of injuries and some of the easier games maybe like against the jets not saying that that's easier but you know there's a couple games that we actually will be able to win i don't think we're going 0 16. we're at least gonna win one game this year <laughs> I, I, I it's just gonna happen josh allen has shown us last game that he is capable of progressing he got a touchdown you know and i don't know if you guys saw the video of him but he's on the sideline um talking to the defense hyping him up getting them getting in their faces that's that's a leader right there that's a leader that's a, a natural born leader you can't teach leadership and josh allen he just showed he 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 showed why buffalo chose him sure other people were were talking away these the media was talking away saying oh he's gonna be a bust 56 percent completion percentage not so good coming from wyoming you know all this stuff knocking against him Yet he has this mental thing that that I don't know if any other rookie quarterback actually has. Maybe Baker Mayfield is the closest because he he had to rise, he had to make his own path. But Josh Allen, man, he's showing he's showing some some attributes of being a really good leader. And and you know if he can develop, which I think you know Josh Allen, he had he had some throws that were good in the game. He had some bad throws. He you know you know he's he looks like a rookie. He didn't do anything that was so bad. He didn't do anything that was so good. He just kept going, trying to just keep shooting downfield, keep getting passes. 245 yards, one touchdown, uh, two picks. Two of those picks, not good balls to throw. The first pick, he's being dragged like 10 yards by Melvin Ingram. Just throw the ball away. But that physical strength, though, to, to keep a guy like that on your tail and you're just dragging him, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but you know, throw the ball away there, man. And then the other one, the second pick, uh, with, when he was targeting Jason Kroom, not a good move, not a good throw because the, the defender was right there. I mean, it was a, it was a pick from the from, as soon as he threw that ball. It wasn't, it, you know, he was right there. It was not a good throw. And you know, that's that's okay. It was one throw. It was you know two picks. You know, it's a rookie. It, move, you move on. You move on. Okay. Um, next up, run game. Where's the run game? I mean, it's ridiculous. I, I understand you lose three Pro Bowl offensive linemen in Cordy Glenn, Eric Wood, and Richie Incognito, who, you know, Eric Wood and Richie Incognito, very good run blockers. You know, you lose two guys like that who are able to create space, open holes for Shady McCoy. Couldn't really get anything going. He had like nine carries for like 39 yards. And on one, on one run, he had 27 yards. So that just shows you that he had one good run, and the rest of the time, it was just a bunch of trash. Burning trash every time we run the ball. And that was not good. So 
who knows what we're gonna do now with the run game I don't know we just need to get that run game established something something has to happen with John Miller Vlad Dukas they're not the best pass blockers but they are good run blockers so hopefully they can create some space and moving forward open up some holes for Shady Shady is questionable for next game with some fractured ribs uh, Ryan Groy landed on him kind of awkwardly and, and fractured some ribs and he was lying on the ground if you guys remember I'm sure you do but um unfortunate it is what it is though what are you gonna do O-line did play better O-line did play better um, it is what it is you know you saw it for yourself couple of miscues but not as bad as week one um, definitely improved um, and I think that they're gonna continue to get better and the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is be humble. Be humble right now. A lot of fans are talking about how bad we are, talking about how we're going to go 0-16. We're the, we're the 2018 Cleveland Browns. All this talk, right? All this talk. You got to tune it out. Don't even listen to the media. Look to the future. And that's all you can do in this in this in this point. That's all you can do. Tell me what you guys think about the Chargers game. What encouraged you? What makes you a little nervous? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to read them, and maybe I'll get back to some of you guys. Uh, I'll comment something back. So try to start a conversation. So I will see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a great day, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Go Bills. Peace.